Hi, my name is James Ferentino, and today I want to show you a few tips to make a boring, cheesy, and fake sounding drum set sound a little more interesting and realistic. Alright, so the first thing that I'll do is I'll play you what I have here. I put together a few samples to make a little boring uh, drum set here. So let's play. Alright, so there you go. I think that qualifies as boring. So let's get to work here. Alright, the first thing I want to do is highlight all these instruments here and put them in a track stack so we can have the ability to edit them, edit them all at the same time. So here we go. We'll label this drums. Alright. Alright, so the, now what I want to do here is I want to make it sound like it's an actual drum set being played. So I want to put a little bit of a room reverb in here to make them sound like they're all played in the same room. So I'll open up this bus here. I'll take a reverb, space designer, stereo. Then I'll hit this drop down, do a small space, and we'll pick a room here. We'll do drum, drum booth three, and we'll make it really wet. All right. So uh, I'm going to play this while rolling up this bus. All right. This we want to be really subtle. This way it doesn't clutter the mix too much. And also, we're going to put a EQ here and take out some of the, the bass. This way, also, it makes it more precise and less cluttery down the line. All right, so now we got a little bit of a room. The next thing we're going to do is it, uh, mess with this kick a little bit. So we're going to do something called NY Compression to give it a little more pump and uh, volume here. Okay, so we're going to make another bus. We'll do bus 3, and we'll call this one NY Compression. We'll use the Studio FET because it sounds very good with drums and we'll make it really like outrageous here. And we'll put the attack down to like zero. All right, we'll call this NY Compression. All right. And then also another thing I wanted to do here is give this a name, Room Reverb. All right. So now let's roll this in. Let's roll this in and see how it sounds. Alright, so now our kick is really kicky. So now we'll go down to the snare here and we'll mess with this a little bit. First thing I want to do is add a little bit of a slap delay. Okay, hold on, let me change that. All right, the reason why I'm putting a slap delay on this snare, I'll show you because, all right, let me load up the slap delay. Do tape delay stereo, drop down, we'll do 16th note slap, but I'm gonna change this to 132nd dotted, make it a little more uh, random and interesting sounding. We'll pump that in a little bit, and I wanna EQ the bottom, so there's only really some of the high frequencies here. Make it really high, this way, this gives the illusion that there's a microphone underneath the snare, which is a common recording practice. So I'll show you how it sounds. See how, let me unsolo that. Okay, you see how there's like a snap to it? It almost sounds like the bottom of a snare. All right, it has to be very subtle though, because otherwise it just sounds like two hits. You want it to be very like buried in there, so it just sounds like a small snap on the bottom of the snare. All right, there we go. It just adds a little more sustain to the snare and it sounds a little more interesting. All right, the next step I wanna to do to this poor little snare is add a little distortion to it. Okay, so in another bus, bus five, we'll do distortion. Okay, so let's find it here, right in this menu. I'm gonna go to distortion, I'll try just regular distortion, I'll put the output down and the drive up a lot. Let's roll it in slowly so we don't blow out our ears. Okay, what this does is add a little more grit and a little more warmth to it, so it sounds like a, a nice old drum set. This will counterbalance that uh, high-end uh, uh, slap that we put on. 
but we want to take out a lot of the base of this one too just to give it a little more fullness but it doesn't clutter the kick or the bass that we're going to put in the song later on okay let's hear how that sounds all right we're getting there so now let's mess let's give the snare a break and we'll hit up this hi-hat for a little while let's hear it soloed all right so it, we basically have like no dynamics here. It's just the same sample played, like pop, 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 pop. So let's uh, give it a little more dynamic. First thing I want to do is actually I want to use this third party um, plugin here called Waves Pumper. And uh, basically, this is used for, uh, you know, when you want to side chain a bass or like a synth to like a kick drum in house. But this is very useful for this because it just gives it more of like a dynamic. You'll hear how it sounds. Just want to take it down a little bit here and play it. You hear how it changes the hi hat? It's like one, two, one, two, one, two. Let's hear it again. All right, see how that's sounding. And you want it to be a little subtle though, because then it sounds a little too artificial if it's too high. All right, now let's add a little bit of distortion to this one. Well, yeah, no, not that way. We'll use the bus. Here we go, we'll dial that in a little bit, give it a little more warmth, and it sounds like a larger and old hi-hat. Here we go. Here it has more like mid-range in it, and it sounds like, a, like an old, dirty hi-hat. Sounds pretty nice, here we go. All right, cool. So now another step that I like to do is go back to this track stack, and then I'm gonna add a compressor to the whole thing, but not too much, because we already have the NY compression going here, and there's not a lot of dynamics to begin with, but this is gonna glue it all together a little bit. All right, let's check the output here. All right, that's good for now. I usually generally like to be a little under three decibels. This way when I layer other stuff, it's not a problem. But just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna leave it where it's at. All right, so now another trick I like to do with the hi-hats is I wanna put a little bit of chorus on it. This gives it the effect of usually when you record like a drum set, you have two microphones. So you wanna give it a little more of that uh, phasey kind of sound. So we'll bust six, we'll do chorus here. Under modulation, we'll have chorus. Okay, let's hear how that sounds. You hear, you hear it very subtly there. I wanna take out a lot of the EQ here. I wanna take out a lot of the bass and really leave only the high. Just adds a little more sparkle on top. Yeah, it's very subtle, but it gives a little more of a professional effect here. So now th another thing I want to do is after this pumper, I'm going to use a little bit of tremolo. So which is under modulation, tremolo, stereo. And this you want to take the depth down a lot so you don't make your listener dizzy. All right. All right, so now the reason why I want to put this tremolo on this hi-hat, even though it might sound slightly artificial, is because sometimes when you have two microphones on a drum set, left and right, um, when you're hitting this hi-hat with a drum stick, maybe in different places, the microphone to the left and to the right will pick up slightly different um, uh, frequencies from the left and right that change between each hit. So this might like kind of subtly mirror this effect. So that's why you don't want it to be too much, but let's hear it again. All right, so it's starting to sound a little more interesting. 
Now, the one thing that's bothering me still is the snare. It's basically the same trigger. Ch -ch -ch. So let's, uh, let's vary this a little more. So in order to do this, I'm going to hold down Alt, drag the snare, and make two copies here. I basically want to chop it up this way we can like edit each snare separately to make it sound different each hit so what I want to do is I want to highlight both and I chop them all in the middle like this let's open up this we'll do a split by the playhead split by the playhead I'm gonna do this basically each one so bear with me for a second <laughs> We should have some elevator music playing here. All right, so that's cut out. Now, basically what I want to do is I want to take turns cutting each one out like this. All right, now we have two different ones. And now the bottom one, what I want to do here is I'm going to time stretch it slightly just to give it more of like a, a tone difference. Might make it a little more low or louder. So we stretch it a little bit and now we got to put it on the beat, back on the beat, which is over here. So I'm gonna drag that over, line that up. Now I wanna trim them, highlight them all again, trim them, bring it over here, like that, and bring this here so it lines up here. I'm gonna drag it back up. And now I wanna do, what is it called? The crossfade in between each of these. There we go. Make sure they're all highlighted when you do this. And then I wanna do this and this. And let's hear how that sounds like. And if it's too different, we can compress it. Hold on, let's play. All right, you see that? See how this is a little more quieter? This has a little more sustain because we stretched it and it's a little louder. Just to add a little more like difference. All right, so one thing I don't like is that the sustain is being cut off too early. So let's just drag this over a little bit. Just like that. All right, let's do this manually. I'm holding down shift as I click. I'm gonna move this over a little bit. I'm going to hold shift again on these, drag it over, and the crossfade came back, so let's hear it. All right, sounded pretty cool. You can do the same thing for this too. I'm holding down shift and clicking. I just want to drag this over just to, so that the tail end is not being cut too much. All right, it's starting to sound a lot better. But uh, I wanna keep this kind of basic for now. So that's all, all the tips for today. And uh, those are just little easy tips to do and like little creative things that you can build upon to get your uh, boring, like maybe MIDI samples to sound a little more lively and interesting and realistic. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And again, my name is James Ferrantino and I thank you very much for watching. So I'll see you on the next one. Bye.